specifically, as specific as you can, assuming there's a, a minority government, right, uh, and you have a, some handful of MPs there, not from the number, uh, how are you going to work within that minority government to actually, in a practical way, create some pragmatic change? If, if you don't mind. No, look, Greg, thank you. And I, I, I'm grateful for the chance to shift from how things got broken to how we fix them. In a minority parliament, with a will to work across party lines, no matter how many of us there are, I mean, obviously the ideal scenario, which you can't predict, it's a matter of the math, whether you have the balance of power or not. My friends in Australia, the Green Party in Australia, the election before last, had the balance of power with one seat, Adam Gunn from Melbourne. That was the one green seat in the lower house, and it, made, it was the difference that stopped Tony Abbott from forming government back then. Uh, what you do with the seats you've got, with either balance of power or the ability to offer support, which the, in a minority parliament, any group of parliamentarians are going to need. They're going to need our support. So we start saying we need to see changes. We need to see the bill uh, that, that controls coordination. We need to see the bill that says that, or at least changes to the standing orders that you can't do on with budget bills that throw in unrelated items and zillions of them enforced through Parliament fast. We can make these changes relatively quickly and relatively easily. We also can relatively quickly and relatively easily get rid of the first past the post voting system. That's the <laughs> Making democracy work for the people is also going to take a lot more transparency built into the process. So no such thing as hidden orders of council and in relation to transparency, we have to protect ourselves from the horrible Canada-China investment treaty, which we're stuck with till the year 2045. And the way to do that is to make sure that we have laws that require that any pressure from the People's Republic of China automatically be made public, so everyone knows about it. So if they start threatening us that if we pass a new fisheries act, they're going to punish us. We have to know. There's a whole slew of reform items, and they're all doable, and only fixing the Senate requires opening the Constitution. Everything we need to do to restore Westminster parliamentary democracy, respect for traditions, and shrink the size of the Prime Minister's office can be done with more Greens in Parliament. Whether we're five, or we're six, or we're 12, or we're 15, obviously the more the better. But even a small, persistent group of Green MPs who keep raising these issues will get the Canadian public to see them more, get the news media to cover them more, and we can force these changes to happen. It sounds odd to use force and cooperation in the same sentence. But we're going to have to force cooperation and put an end to the nonsense of excessive, hyper-partisan squabbling that takes the place of governing in this country. We can get the Parliament to work. Good evening, and thanks kindly for being here. And I'm glad to be here. My name is Audrey Walt. I live right across the street. I used to be on the North Park board for a year. Um, what I'm speaking about, or I would like to speak on behalf of, is kind of the uh, hidden majority. It's kind of smothered. It has not been really identified. I don't think in Canada you talk about a broken system. I would like to ask you what your plans might be for those, what, one in every 10, one in every five Canadians has some form of disability. What, do you ever hear anybody on the podium saying, this is what we're going to do for the disabled? No, I want some form of constructive approach to even identifying them in Canada, never mind helping them. For example, how many people in this room could live on what, $1,000 a month check and have to pay $800 a month rent? I think I made my point, you can fill it all in. As I said, Reverend Chiswick in, what was it, 07, called me the disability advocate. I have worked, I worked for 20 years with a partial, if there's such thing as a partial disability, of an audio disability, which I had. I became involved with the disabled and I have done nothing. I'm lucky because I had made enough money 
while working to pay for my place. I can hardly afford to live on what I'm receiving now. I mean, I'll probably get cut off from disability by even saying this. I'm just, in a way, playing the worst possible scene, of course. Be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. I hope for the best from the Green Party to help consolidate and appreciate or support us disabled who can live. Thank you. Thank you, Audrey. And I can tell you that I'm really pleased to be able to tell you that it's in our policies and our platform to bring in a disabilities act, something that we're cancer and advocating for a long time, that protects the rights of, dis of the disabled population of Canada to work in what people want to work, to have dignity and a decent wage and if you're not able to work, and to have the programs and support that the disabled community needs. Now, one of the things we'll do, which will be helpful to everybody across Canada, two key things that also particularly assist the disabled. One is the guaranteed livable income to eliminate poverty. Thank <laughs> you. 
the reality is that the big challenge in Canada is vote abandoning, yes. not vote splitting. The largest voting block in Canada in the last few elections, 40% of Canadian voters are people who stay home. So there's, there's uh, what my daughter calls truthiness around this idea. You think, oh, there's people and there's truth. The, the reality of Greens is we increase voter turnout. On Vancouver Island, in particular, nobody should be worried about vote splitting because what's the notion here? We've got no chance of a conservative winning in Victoria, and we're still told we might split the vote. In San Angelo Islands, I get people saying to me, I voted for you last time, I think you're great, but this time I really have to stop Stephen Harper, so I have to vote strategically. <laughs> I'm afraid that the messaging around vote splitting, as well intentioned as it will be, and I said, I love people in many of the groups that are trying to make people worry. Fear not, I say this in the church, fear not, uh, fear not, on Vancouver Island, uh, there is not a snowball chance in hell of a conservative winning in Victoria, or, you know, these ridings are not about to vote for Stephen Harper. The reality is, we will grow the vote, help us grow the vote. Yeah. Yeah. Find people who didn't vote in 2011. We know that Stephen Harper has made it hard for people to vote under the Fair Elections Act. Find people who didn't vote last time. Take them early. As a matter of fact, go to the returning office now, before the Thanksgiving weekend when the advance polls start, where there's more time to go in and make sure you've got all the right people. Rose Henry's organizing for homeless people. We need to help people who have a right to vote, to get out and vote. That's much more important than making people fearful, afraid to know how to vote, maybe not turning out to vote because they're so sure that voting for what they want will somehow turn into something bad. Voting for Joanne Roberts will elect Joanne Roberts. Yeah. October 1st and October 19th, 
volunteered in SGI in, in 2011. A lot of you in this room, right? This, and didn't we have fun? And are we having fun getting to us? rigid 
on whether it's a single transferable vote, mixed member proportional, or some other system. Personally, I think we should consult and have a referendum across Canada, but I wouldn't quibble if a Prime Minister wanted to say, say if it was Tom O'Care or Justin Trudeau, we've decided we want to put this to a vote in Parliament right now. It only takes a bill in Parliament to change our voting system. We don't have to open up the Constitution. It can be done very effectively. My personal preference to give you the full answer is I prefer mixed member proportional because you have a link to your local MP and your parliament as a whole reflects the way the public actually voted. And I don't particularly like mandatory voting, although it's better than nothing as a solution. And one last thought about the voting system. The Green Party would like to lower the voting age to 16 to be sure that we see higher voter turnout by getting young people voting when they're in a, in a context with a, a high school, they can study the platforms and start getting used to the process of voting. Although I think with mixed member proportional, more people are going to vote anyway. So thank you for a great question and thanks for a great town hall. And I, for those of you who are still behind, I will definitely talk to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. So very quickly before we uh, finish up for the night, I'd like to invite uh, Sonia Throw, my colleague and co-camping manager, and uh, Joanne. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine working with a more dedicated, 
a more inspiring group of people. Every day I come into the office and somebody's got something great to say. It doesn't matter how long the day was the day before. I come in and someone says, the coffee's on, and gee, you did a great job last night. Hey, what do you get on today? And you know what? The spring of my step keeps me going. Uh, 
Um, but thank you very much for being here. Um, and uh, just as we close and, and uh, file it, we have, um, we have uh, a song that, a uh, music video I guess is really what it is. It's called uh, Take Back This Land by Bill Henderson. So they're going to play it up on the screens. Uh, so please enjoy that on your way out and we look forward to talking to you and getting enjoyed.